Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper question for AP Physics 1. In this series, we will only focus on multiple choice questions and after this series, we will focus on FRQs as well. We will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of AP Physics topics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. And also, if you have any questions from any past papers, you can leave your questions in comments. Then I will try to answer as soon as possible. Let's study together. Let's improve together. AP Physics 1 exam consists of two sections. Section 1 has only multiple choice questions and section 2 has only FRQs. Section 1, total time for section 1 is 90 minutes and total number of questions in this section are 50 and this is 50% of total scores. And this section is also divided into two parts. For question 1 to question 45, you have to choose only one single best answer and for questions from 46 to 50 you have to select two best possible answers so this is very important so from question 1 to question 45 you have to choose only one best possible answer and from question 46 mean for last five questions you have to choose two best possible answers on second page of exam paper you can also find some important data mean values of some important constants are given to you and also some prefixes are given and also values of some trig functions are also given so if you need value of any constant any trig function or if you need value of any prefix you can come to this page and you can find values if you go to the next page on next page you can see some important formulae are given to you first of all try to remember these formulae so in the exam you can answer questions quickly but if you have forgotten any formula and you need in your exam you can come to this page and you can double check the formulae so it's important to understand that these things are given to you in your exam so if you need them you can come and you can check for this exam we can use value of g equal to 10 meters per second per second now if we go to question one for question one it is given to us an object is moving to the right with speed vi when a force of magnitude f is exerted on it in which of the following situations is the object's direction of motion changing direction of motion changing and kinetic energy decreasing at the instant shown so in this case as you can see object is moving to the right and the initial speed of the object is vi we need to find out direction is changing so these two things we have to consider direction should be changing direction changes and ke decreases ke decreases so these ke decreases direction of the object has to change when the force is exerted on the object and kinetic energy of the object has to decrease if kinetic energy decrease it also means that speed has to decrease so it means object has to slow down object has to slow down now we need to understand when object will slow down for example this is object if this object is moving to the right let's say its initial speed is to the right if we apply force on this object in opposite direction in this case object will slow down so these concepts you need to understand object will slow down now you can also imagine that if object is moving to the right let's say this is the initial speed of the object and we apply force in the same direction as direction of motion in this case object will speed up object will speed up mean its kinetic energy will increase we can also take another special case let's say object is moving to the right and we apply force on this object at an angle of 90 degree let's say we apply force in this case upwards or we apply force downwards only direction of motion will change if this angle is 90 degree in this case only direction changes only direction changes so the speed of the object will not change but only its velocity will change so direction of motion will change because in this case work done is equal to zero 
and so work done by this force is equal to zero so the speed will remain constant so we will say in this case speed does not change or we can say speed remains constant so these points you need to understand to answer this problem now we will go to the question and we will try to find the best possible answer now if you look at uh, option a in this case this force is at an angle of 90 degree to direction of motion of the object so in this case only direction changes so we will simply say direction changes only speed will not change so it means this is not possible answer direction has to change and speed has to decrease but if you look at option b in this case object will only slow down I mean in this case speed will change it will slow down so this is also not best possible answer if you look at option c in this case we can resolve this force into two components so one component is in direction of force mean it will speed up so we can say it will speed up and one component means we can draw another component here so due to this component of force its direction changes direction changes so two components so let me redraw here so we can draw this is our object this is direction of vi so the force is here so due to this force this force has two components so let me use different color so you can have better idea so if i resolve this force into two component one component of this force is this way a long direction of motion so it will speed up due to this component due to horizontal component and due to vertical component of the force we can say fv its direction will change so it will speed up and direction changes but we need to find out when it will slow down so c is also not best possible answer I means c is also incorrect now if we go to option d in this case force is acting this way so the best way to answer this question is first of all resolve this force into components so this is one component and this is another component of force so due to this component this object will slow down because this is in opposite direction of direction of motion so due to this component of force object will slow down so we can say it will slow down and due to this component direction will change direction changes so direction changes so then so far this question is t direction changes and slow down so then so far this one is t i hope you have some better understanding of this question and also you have improved your conceptual understanding of forces and motion mean how forces and motion they are linked together question 2 says a ball is suspended by a lightweight string as shown in the figure above the ball is displaced to position 1 and release the four labeled positions are evenly spaced along the arc of the ball's motion between which adjacent pairs of positions is the change in kinetic energy of the ball greatest so we need to find out the positions where delta k is the greatest delta k is greatest change in kinetic energy is greatest not the kinetic energy is greatest so in this case we need to understand as the ball is falling down ball is losing gpe so we can simply write down gpe is lost and loss in gpe has to be equal to gain in ke kinetic energy gain simply we can write down so this has to be equal and so if the loss in gpe is the greatest it means gain in ke will be the greatest so we can write right on here loss in gpe we can say that one simply will be equal to delta h m g delta h and this one will be equal to change in kinetic energy delta k so where delta h is greatest so for that purpose simply we can draw the lines here we can draw these horizontal lines so we can place this one here so we have this horizontal line and we can draw an other horizontal line here and we can draw the last one this horizontal line here now simply we need to understand delta h where delta h 
is the greatest. So in this case, it is very obvious that delta k is greatest in first interval, I mean between 1 and 2. So this is over delta h. So here you can see this is over delta h and here we have this delta h. So delta h is greatest between 1 and 2. It means change in gpe is the greatest. So the change in ke is also the greatest. So the answer for this question has to be a between 1 and 2. So this is a beautiful way to answer this question. I hope this question is clear to you. Question 3 says a newly discovered planet is found to have density 2 by 3 rho e and radius 2 r e where rho e and r e are the density and radius of earth respectively. The surface gravitational field of the planet is most nearly means we need to find out value of g. So in this case we have two planets so simply you can imagine that we have one planet this is our beautiful planet this is earth and we have an other planet so this is another planet another planet so we can say this planet is new planet simply we can say this is new we need to find out value of g so first of all we can write on g this is equal to g capital m over r square mean the distance from the center of the planet to a point so in this case we are only talking about surface so it means r is the radius it is given to us that radius of our planet the density of our planet is given to us that is rho sub e so we can write on first of all this in terms of density so we can say g this is equal to capital g m we can write down volume 4 by 3 pi r cube times the density and this is divided by r so if we simplify this one we can cancel in this case we have r squared so this is r squared this is also r squared so r squared we can cancel with this now if we simplify we will get 4 by 3 capital G and here we have pi and we have R times density in this case this is constant this is constant for these two planets so this one is constant so we can rewrite this we will be writing here so we can say in this case G over R times E this is equal to some constant because this is constant so this is constant for these two planets so we can say this is equal to constant so now we can write on here so this is g for our planet over radius of our planet times the density of our planet this one has to be equal to value of g on new planet means value of g at the surface of new planet we can say this is g n divided by radius of this planet we have that is 2 times r e and the density of this planet is given to us that is equal to 2 by 3 rho sub e so we can plug in here this is 2 times r and here we have this is 2 by 3 rho sub e so in this case now simply we can cancel this r e with this rho e we can cancel with this rho e so we have to find out in this case value of g n so this is g sub n so here we have this is 4 by 3 so if we rearrange this one so in this case we can say g n this is equal to 4 by 3 g sub e and value of g on the surface of our planet we have surface of our planet we have that is equal to 10 so here we have this is 40 divided by 3 so we will get around 13 so we will get 13 so 13 newtons per kg so the answer for this question is d so this is a way how you can approach this type of problems where ratio is involved so we use ratio method a best tool to answer when you have to compare two things when you have to compare two different quantities so this is the best way to answer this type of problem so try to use this method more frequently so you can master this tool and today's class we will just stop here 
and in next video we will discuss the remaining questions i hope this video was helpful if this video has helped you to improve your conceptual understanding of these questions please like and subscribe and a lot of videos are coming about ap physics one in near future i'll see you in next video